You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you guys for joining us today. Hope you're having a great day. We appreciate that you're spending a few minutes of that day with us, as always. We do appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for leaving the reviews, commenting, and asking questions. Because if it weren't for you, well, we probably wouldn't be sitting here. So we really do appreciate those reviews. It really means a lot to us. Indeed. If you have a second, leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you download podcasts. Because... Maybe it'll help someone else learn a little something and make the industry a better place overall. All right. Today's question is going to be talking about flying in negative GPS environments, which could be between two tall buildings. It could be in a very heavily interfered environment like college campus or maybe like an oil rig or a parking structure. How do you fly in those environments? Well, that and so much more on today's episode. So today's episode is uh, brought to you by our friends at the Drone U community. If you haven't had a chance to check out the new business course, which goes over in detail how to set up your drone business, create autonomous systems, and eventually set yourself up for an exit strategy, if that's what you like, then you've got to check out the business course available now to Drone U members. Try it out today, droneu.education. Hi guys, Ash here from London in the UK. Uh, I've been commercially flying now for two years, but I've had a request that I wanted to run by you. I've been asked to take off and land from an oil rig type structure out in the ocean. The whole thing is of course made out of metal, and I know that that can sometimes screw with the drone. How do I go about this without the drone falling into the water? I appreciate everything you do. Thanks for everything. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Ashley. Appreciate the question all the way from uh, London. Love it. Thank you for listening. Really, really appreciate it. And guys, if you have a question, you can go to askdroneu.com just like Ashley did and get your question in. Um, again, like Paul introed this uh, question, there's actually a lot of environments that are very similar to what Ashley's asking about. So it's not just if you're going to go out on a rig that this could uh, impact you. That is very true. Um, there are a lot of environments that could be negative GPS environments, meaning you don't get a GPS signal. So what are things that you can do? Well, first off, he may still be able to get a good GPS signal and acquisition if he were to take off from above a case at one of the highest positions on the oil rig. But one thing that he should really research is whether or not the drone that he is flying is spark proof or not. Because typically when you're flying on oil rigs, you typically have to fly what's called a spark proof drone. You can't even carry certain materials with you that could scrape together and create a spark of some sort. There really has to be a protocol for bringing electronics onto an oil rig. That is something I'm familiar with. We've had um, students who fly in the Gulf of Mexico who have run into this as well. Now, what can you do to your drone? Let's say you took off from the highest position on the oil rig and you're still having GPS interference issues. What can you do? Well, first of all, I hope that you're a good Addy mode flyer. Can you fly in attitude mode or what Unique calls manual mode? If not, start practicing today. Uh, we actually have a great class called Drills and Exercises. Uh, utilizing the hover test, which will really help you uh, overcome flying in attitude mode. You can also book a local training uh, through the Drone U Elite web portal. Those trainings are available all over the country, but not quite available in the UK, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's coming, coming soon. Someday. Yeah, we're actually supposed to be talking about international expansion at our owner's meeting. Um, anyway, uh, so what can you do? Well, first thing you can do is turn off Smart Go Home. You do not want the bird calculating the amount of power left to try to fly home to China in case you don't have a good GPS signal. Which, by the way, you a, a native GPS environment could be as simple as you're taking off from a boardwalk that has a lot of rebar in it. Um, PJ was actually taking off from uh, a sidewalk outside of our hotel in San Diego and couldn't get a GPS signal. On Aeroscope, it was showing that his home point was in Milwaukee. So I was like, yeah, you Oops. probably shouldn't fly that very far away. That's right. <laughs> Not enough battery to go home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other thing that he should do is set his signal loss 
So typically you go in and it's like, so what do you want the drone to do when you lose a signal? You can set it to return to home, hover, or auto land. Just like I teach in my subject tracking course, you want to set that to hover because you do not want it relying on GPS to fly anywhere. Thirdly, you want to watch the battery adamantly. You really want to make sure that you have a uh, battery voltage or, dis or display battery voltage on main screen on because when you're at 3.6 volts, as long as you're not more than, say, uh, five, 600 feet away in those uh, offshore winds, then you should be able to typically make it back to yourself. And uh, I would hand catch the drone, too, when you land it. That's probably going to be a lot easier for you. That way you don't have a tip over and, again, have a spark. Um, other things, I already talked about taking off from a case. Um, if you have a drone new landing pad, the bottom of it is rubberized. It does help when you're trying to take off from things like parking structures and, and other areas. But typically, I put my landing pad on top like of an Inspire 2 case and then take off from there. And that does help out a lot. It's a small difference, but it does help. Yeah, no, that's a good surface, too. I mean, it's plenty big. It is plenty big. And finally, our new landing pads came in. Yay! Get to do a marketing video on that next week. I'm excited. So again, so just a quick recap. Turn off smart go home. Uh, set signal loss to hover. Turn voltage on main screen on. Um, also ensure that you take off from a case or take off from a very high point position. Make sure you're good at flying in attitude mode. Um, you know, you should be able to get a good signal if you take off really high and, and whatnot because flying in those environments doing inspections is going to be really difficult because typically you're going to be dealing with some offshore winds mm -hmm. anywhere from 10 to 20 miles an hour on a given day. Yeah, I think regularly you're going to have that. Yep, I mean, they more. actually talk about this in the FAA test. There's a specific type of windage where essentially, you know, during the day, uh, you know, the warm air, uh, let's see, how is it? During the day, the cold air comes on shore, and then at night, uh, the warm air goes out to the ocean. If it's like convective currents, I forget exactly what it's called. Mm. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, I haven't been studying for my part 107 since I already passed it again. <laughs> so so with, with a few precautions, there's really nothing to be afraid of in doing something like this. Just um, make sure you know what you're doing. It's a very high risk job. You need a significant amount of insurance. You need to make sure that you're covered depending on how far out the oil rig is in waters. Because if it's more than 11 miles out from the shoreline, it could be in international waters and you want to make sure your policy covers that. That's a really good point. That's a good point. So when you say it's high risk, you're talking about because of the Oh, dude, this is as high risk as it gets. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got, you're flying a bomb around, you know. <laughs> I think about a lithium battery when it hits oxygen, you know, not really sure. a bomb, but, you know, crazy uh, fires going on. An explosive. On. Explosive reaction yes. is probably accurate. For sure. Um, you know, I think even something like, gosh, I, I really warn against this because it could cause more harm than good. It may even be something he want to wear. He wants to have like prop guards on, but I think those main settings are going to be really important. In addition, just watching that battery level is going to be so critical. I mean, like every sixty seconds, I would have a a uh, reminder on my watch or something like check battery level, check battery level, check battery level. So I don't know what type of job he's doing. Could be like a thermal inspection for um, equipment that's not working. I'm not really sure, but. Either way, I think uh, he's got a great opportunity. I would charge a lot of money. I would get really high insurance. Mm -hmm. I would try to ensure they turn off everything that causes interference, like Wi-Fi, radio signals, satellite stuff. Uh, I would have a spectrometer out there with me, and I would check the frequencies that I'm going to operate on and make sure that everything is clear. Man, there's a lot of safety that goes into this, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so nothing to be afraid of per se. I mean, if you're going to go out and do it, don't be afraid, but be very, very prepared. Very prepared. Definitely. And awesome. be very uh, adamant about Exciting. watching your battery voltage 3.6 guys. Uh, be, guys, make sure if you don't, if you're not comfortable flying in attitude mode, your propensity and probability for becoming a successful pilot are immediately diminished. You need to be able to fly in attitude mode, period, period. That goes out to you and a high fire department. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> inside you know joke. Who I'm talking about even to me. I don't um, know what that's about. Yeah, well, Rancho Cucamonga knows who I'm talking about. Okay. So that's going to do it for our show today. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. Don't be afraid to leave us a review. But that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Hey.